All right, good morning adjusters. This is Daniel the Adjuster coming to you live with another episode. Hey, it's part two of the day in the life of an adjuster. I know you guys had mentioned that you wanted to see what it was like for an adjuster to live and what I do each day. So the second part is now on the job site when I basically do a perimeter inspection and then I get up on the roof and do that roof inspection. So I'm wearing my GoPro again, gonna see everything that is involved with this episode. Stay tuned, here it comes. All right, guys, we're here at the front of the house. Just wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up of what uh, what I do in an inspection. So I take this picture right here at the front, front right corner, come up to the house. We're gonna look for garage door damage, look down the side, see if there's anything there. Sometimes you'll look across the top here to any metal damage. Okay, down here also with this metal damage down here. And we want to look at the screens. So you look up top, take a nice close up, zoom in on your camera and get a close up of those screens. Uh, we got Christmas lights because it's getting ready to be closer to Christmas. So we got to watch out for those when we put our ladder up. All right, so you just want to look down. Oh, look at that. Right there at the bottom of the gutter, we can see a little ding. I don't know if you guys can see that in the light, but you stand here and you kind of Look for the shadowing and you can see that ding. All right, so come up here to the upper. We'll be looking at those downspouts when we get up top there. The screens, I don't see anything on the screens. So watch out for people's <laughs> Christmas lights and stuff. <laughs> All right, you want to also look for these little lights here. These are landscape lights that sometimes can be broken. Look for that. So you get your left left slope. Come over here, let's take a look at our gutter downspout. Run your hand up and down. A lot of times that you'll get the, the feel of whether there's damage or not on those. And also when there's a spot like this, this is a great spot to show some damage too. So look at that. Look up top. Person's lights are probably protecting that. And your siding. Okay, looking. Looking on this edge, that's just a ding. When they were putting it out, somebody had a hammer up on it. Uh, nothing down there. There'll be chips off the bottom of these. Okay, you look down here, foundation. Foundation foam down here at the bottom. Okay, there's one right there. See that? A little ding right there. Okay, look at your screens. What I do is right on my board here. Okay, left side, foundation, foam. And doesn't look like there's a whole lot, just a couple hits. And uh, we had the gutters on the front. Okay, come down here. Look for your, your gutters. Yep, got some stuff on the bottom there. We can see the gutters there. Right on the bottom, another ding on the bottom. Okay, we can see that. Look for your screens. Don't see anything on the screens. From there, look for your downspout. Nothing here. Nothing on the, the screens here. Okay. Oh, bright light. Get your back. Look at your screens on this side. Screens on the back. And your downspouts. 
Not a whole lot going on around the perimeter. It's not something to be watching. Check your AC. Most of the time they're now covering up the fins to stop them from getting damaged. Do our, our right elevation. Okay, so look at here. Looks like the roofer potentially marked, marked things for us. Got a couple marks here. Okay, so it looks like that's the direction of our hail. Is the right down, like 14 feet. Okay, let's take a look. Our down, our gutter there probably has it on the top. Foundation looks good. Screens look fine. Okay. And downspout. We got lots on the downspout. All right, you guys see that? Uh, the downspout. Okay. And take your right picture there. All right, now let's get our ladder going. All right, so put your boots on. Put your cougar paws down here, guys. Always check your bottom of your pads. Make sure you got some good pad depth. That's something you want to do a, a check on pretty regularly. Okay, my bag. I talked about this, guys. Tape measure. We're only about a 30-footer. Bag of chalk back here. I've got my 100-foot tape measure. Okay, in case I need that, I've got a Leatherman that I use. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Leathermans, but they turn into pliers and knives and all that. So, very handy tool, pulling up carpet, whatever you need. Um, I got a knife in there for cutting carpet samples. Over here, this is my Fleur. Um, this is actually an infrared scanner, hooks on the bottom of my phone. Okay, definitely want to get one of those in case you need to do some infrared for water testing. So that's always in there, it's ready to use if I need it. And that's going to be used more for water to be able to see where water is moving its way through. Over here, I've got a moisture meter. I've got my tape measure from Leica. Leica. I've got um, my metal gauge for metal roofs, thickness gauge. Okay. I got that. I've got my shingle gauge. I got my bungee for uh, sticking on the roof. Okay, pretty much what I do. I put it into a, a big tool belt. It's kind of like a carpenter's tool belt. Put that thing around my waist. I also got my gloves from Home Depot or Lowe's. These are just nice fabric, uh, meshy. They breathe, don't get sweaty. Got the rubber hands, really good glove. Keep in mind. Okay, clipboard. Always use clipboard. Turn it over so I can get measurements. This one I have to measure. I clip it onto my carbiner. Whole reason why it's there. Okay. And this this one here, we're gonna have two ladders. We're gonna have a big ladder on the bottom. And that's gonna be because we need to do a double pull on this. Double pull is two ladders well technically technically it's not two ladders technically the old school way was to put up one ladder pull it up and get to the second level but we're not doing we're not going to do a double pull that way we just use two ladders so get our ladder set up here watch out for mr. Christmas lights do our best to avoid those at all possible. Sometimes it's hard. Okay, we'll come back to the car. We'll get our small ladder, which is for our double pull. I just store that in the side here. Got my rope down there in case I need it. Pull this baby out. And guys, I have a Toyota Highlander, you see? Everything fits nicely in the back of the car. It's a great car. All right, so we're going to get up here. You're holding your second ladder, your left hand, and you're pulling up on your right. 
always have a good firm hand on that ladder as you pull up and then drop this thing on the roof okay set it down now this is when you pull out your shingle gauge it's on a carbiner makes it easy to pull off this is a new roof so we're looking to pull up a shingle <laughs> and it's not coming up because it's new so I just lay it down with laminate showing I pull out my phone I use my nose <laughs> to unlock my phone because my gloves don't work very well through it okay this is what I use pitch factor put it down take a photo very nice feature to be able to take a picture of your pitch take a picture of your shingle gauge and then also under here lift it up and take a picture of how many layers and if there was drip edge now we're gonna be looking for gutter damage looks like the guy chalked this already more than likely we probably have some so let's uh, let's take a look yeah we got some little ones yeah not not tremendously there um, probably is one but we'll take a look up top see if we can see it a little better so you come up here what I do is set up my set up my ladder for the double pull watch out for the Christmas lights And here we're going to look at our flashing metal. Looks like somebody's already marked it up for us. See that little mark right there? Good, good mark showing some flashing damage. Look at your downspouts. Nothing there. The screens. Nothing there. Okay. Fascia metal. Nothing there. You can leave it right in the sun, you can check it and see that. All right, come up here. Remember to use your bungee on this one. All right, so we're gonna just wrap this around best we can to get a good hold. And come back down with our other one. And get something to hold on to. And again, my news <laughs> on my phone. This is silly. All right, front slope. Take a picture of it. Looks like we got a 612. Left slope. Left, right slope. Looking like 812. Okay. Now, just be real careful as you come up. Not to jostle that ladder as you step off. All right, so it looks like our roofer's been up here marking some stuff for us. That's helpful. Definitely helps. Uh, to speed things up a little bit for us we got a ding right there lots of dings on this roof yeah it looks like they made our job easy and this nice <laughs> it's quite nice when uh, when somebody already does the work for you all right so they haven't done the right side here and this is where we saw most of the damage if you look down here we can look for gutter damage don't see anything there but let's take a look all right so what I typically do is I'm looking for those those areas that are that are definitely worn out got got areas that show now that could be a big gouge but who knows it looks pretty big it looks a little bit too big but it could be that the angle of the hail came down at that very possible okay just take your time Just take your time. Best thing to do is just look carefully. Doesn't always happen right in the, in the exact spot you're looking. They do happen 
around the area. So you want to look. This isn't there. Okay, little one here. This is a little one there. And one there. Definitely got something going there. All right, so we've got we got some pretty good damage up here on the right slope that they did not mark, but for sure, right equals 10 plus. Okay, get up here, take your 10 plus, take your tape measure, do a nice little photo there. All right, get your three or four snapshots and then come back and do an overview. Same thing on the left. Get your overview. Got some good hits. Good hits on the left, look at those. Those are great hits. Very, very good hits. There's another one right beside it. That one's decent. Yeah, so this roofer actually did a pretty good job of marking, marking our hits. And there, possibly, maybe not, because it's sitting right next to something else. But left, definitely 10. 10 plus on the left. Take your snapshots, close-ups, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> All right, go to the front. This guy's got them all over the place. All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look. All right, we got a decent one there. Yep, got one there, got one there, got one there. Okay, definitely got 10 plus on that as well. All right. Yeah, he's got marks here. I don't know that I would say those are hill, but we definitely got, got some good ones there. So then what I do after I've done the front, right and left, just do some overviews. Big over you there, over you there, one there, and one there. Go ahead and do the back so I don't forget it. All right, we got our vent. We can take our vent. And we got our boots that are painted. So we want to take a nice photo of that for the camera, <laughs> for the file. I got a turtle vent. Come over here and take a photo of that. Take a photo of the second vent. All right, here we've got a soft spot. So they mentioned a possible soft spot on the plywood. Uh, something's leaking probably right here at the whatever, but oh yeah. Got some, got a nice big dip there. So we come down low. Show the dip. Okay. For our gutters. Alrighty. Not seeing anything on the gutters, which is interesting. Go over here on the gutters. Nothing on the gutters. So it's important to take the photos, guys, of the gutters because you want to also prove there's no damage to those gutters as well. So not only are you taking it if there's damage, you're also taking it if there's no damage. So no damage on the gutters. All right, so let's go up here. Take a look at our back slope for damage. Pretty sure we're gonna have 10 plus on that, so I'll go ahead and take my my snapshot of my 10 plus. 
I get to see these all over the place. See the granule loss? This is a brand new roof, guys. You gotta remember, this is only a year old roof. Year old. Nice big divot. This should not be banged up like this with uh, people just walking on it. So either way, you got 10, 10 plus. Easy. Look up on the ridge. Sometimes, this is, see how my foot kind of caves in on the ridge? You see that? It's nice and soft. This actually protects a fair bit from damage um, from hail because it does give. It gives a little bit, so it doesn't have as much play to cause damage. I got a couple there. So the damage is not going to be as significant on the ridge, mainly because there is a little bit of flexibility. Think, think of the solid wood that's on this roof that that shingle is mounted to. So when damage occurs, it's hitting something really hard with no flex. All right, so like I mentioned, do your overviews, count your vents. This one we're gonna have to measure and then <laughs> enjoy your view. Remember guys, very important to always check out your view. I don't know if any of you are people that love or love nature. I'm a, I'm a God fearing man, so the Lord created all of this beauty. Now we got the leaves changing colors. We've got gorgeous browns, golds, red, mixed in with the green. Beautiful over there. It's just a artwork, painting, beautiful. Beautiful colors here, all the hardwoods here turning yellow. So just take your time, look around, enjoy the view. You only get this when you're on the roof. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many people have a chance to stand up on a roof and just enjoy the view. I almost feel like you could jump to the next one. <laughs> but so, oh, that one I could. <laughs> I won't try. <laughs> but anyways, that's for, uh, that's for another day. So, that being said, let's get off the roof. All right, Daniel the adjuster on the roof. Look at this funky thing on my head. <laughs> I decided to put a, a GoPro slash, this is uh, made by DJI, so this is the, the Osmo 2, I think it is. Anyways, <laughs> great opportunity for you guys to see firsthand what it's like being on the roof, and then also for you to, uh, to kind of feel what it's like being up here. Look at that beautiful view. Oh my goodness, look at that. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> Daniel the adjuster here, wrapping everything up. Just got into the car. We got safe off the roof. Um, pretty excited about that. Uh, anyway, so that was pretty much the, I hope we got all the content. Uh, it'd be really great if we were able to get all the content uh, that I recorded. We'll see when we get back to the house. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, so what I'll do is when I get done, I have um, a GPS set up. If I had another one, I would put in the next location and I would punch in the GPS and follow that to the next location. I would take a photo of my next sheet uh, so that I could subdivide the photos. When I get back to the house and I put the card from my camera into my computer, all the photos are in a line based on date. And the sheet that I took a picture of is going to separate those photos very easily into houses. So I literally just copy and paste off of my card into a folder, name it the insured's name in a folder and put it into a backup file somewhere not on your computer, put it into a, a backup so that uh, you'll have those photos as evidence if they are ever needed. Uh, you just never know. You're supposed to technically keep those for five to seven years uh, in, a, in a storage. So you just want to keep those in case it ever goes to court or whatever. But, I'm typically about three or four years and I get rid of them. I feel like there's just too much to hold on to for that long. So anyway, so yeah, so if you are done for the day, then I would push home on my GPS. I save that for home and I head home. 
Now, when I get home, uh, the first thing I would do is open up my email, check any emergency type emails that uh, need to be addressed right away. And then I would open my Xactimate and I would log in that I have contacted those uh, folks by using the inspected tab. So we've already contacted them and we put that in an Xactimate. Um, and now we have to put in an inspected uh, time. So I would just put the date in, put the time that I inspected it, and then close it all, save it all up and upload it. Uh, you don't really have to upload it, but when you close it, it saves it and saves any new information uh, in the X1 for uh, the desk adjusters or whoever wants to open that file and look at it. Even my file reviewers or my managers can look and see that I've inspected that file. So that's real important as soon as you get home. I mean, you could do it on your phone now. Um, I know some guys that do because they're so keen on those numbers. Uh, because, you know, Xactimate is logging in the time that you created that note. And so they technically say, well, that's not really the, the time that you inspected it. Uh, it's the time that Xactimate, uh, you know, acknowledges it in their system. Um, if you're a numbers guy and you are just so keen on being number one, the best of the best, the fastest of the fastest, then I'd recommend doing that. But I've had no one come to me and say, you know, you should be turning in the, on the job site. You should be plugging in that you inspected the house right then and there on the claim. You know, I've never had anybody say that, so don't bother. So um, a lot of times I'll get some lunch on the way home um, because most of the time I'm 40 minutes, 50 minutes away from the house. I save my receipts uh, because that is I'm out of town. It shows the receipt out of my my. I'm out of my city, I'm more than 30 miles away from my home. Uh, so technically I use that as a, a guidance for my tax write-off for food. Uh, I don't overspend on eating out, so I try not to do that uh, because if you do, it's gonna flag really bad for uh, tax if you ever get audited. And they're gonna say, you're, you know, you're eating out $20 meals for lunch every single day. No, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. I spend between eight and $10, um, maybe less sometimes. Just try to keep it low. And that's what I spend five to six days a week. So, uh, so you can do the same. I have not any problems. No one's questioned it. Uh, it's a good expense and it's a good write-off. And so uh, it allows you to, to be able to put that in. So, if you're finding anything interesting here, guys, this is a lot of information for an inspection, uh, kind of like as I did it. Uh, this is a first-hand experience. I'm glad you guys were a part of it. Please like and subscribe. Check out my other videos. And uh, don't hesitate to ask me any questions at all, comments. Uh, I got a comment the other day. <laughs> the guy gave me like 40 videos suggestions. <laughs> no, maybe not. I think it was like 30 of them. Uh, of suggestions that I could do for videos and super super helpful because I mean I have a hundred ideas already of what I want to talk about uh, but it's so nice to hear somebody else giving me suggestions so really cool so if you uh, have any thoughts of a great video that you want me to post you're interested in what I'm doing uh, please like and follow subscribe to my channel and we'll see you on the next one Daniel the Adjuster coming to you live from the car. Bye-bye. <laughs>